All right, what is up, YouTube? So today we are gonna build some pedal boards. Um, I got a couple of videos I took of me kind of going through some, pulling the board apart, putting it back together, kind of explaining some things. Uh, this is the main board. We also have another mini board. I guess I should unplug it. We also have another mini board. I'm gonna go over why I have two different boards, uh, what the point of having two different boards is, and all that stuff. So uh, first, let's just jump into some of the footage of putting the board, tearing the board apart, putting it together, uh, and all that stuff. Here we go. All right, so I guess I should have done like a before, uh, you know, of me ripping the whole board apart, but we've pulled the pedal board apart, and the plan is, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna replace all this old Velcro, this old crappy Velcro. We're gonna replace it all with dual lock. Uh, don't know if you know what dual lock is, but this stuff is way better than Velcro. It's a lot cleaner, it's a lot neater, it's a lot stronger. Um, you know, when you have some stuff like this on there, with this kind of velcro and this is pretty high quality velcro but it still had a tendency to kind of move a little bit do this a little bit all right <clears throat> here's a board i built the other day and these pedals have dual lock on them and you can see how the board's just a lot cleaner looking and look at this there's no there's no movement at all and you can you can do this you can pick the whole board up so, the lock's a lot stronger, a lot neater, a lot cleaner. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna redo the main board with dual lock. So yeah, here we go. Okay, so almost done with the board. And you, know, you can see how much cleaner it looks already. So this is dual lock, just in case you guys were wondering. It comes in a box like this. And you can buy like smaller things of it. I just bought this gigantic one. So it's just the same thing, right? It's not like two sides like Velcro is. And so all you do is you take it and you turn it at 90 degrees and you lock it into itself. And it's super cool. And it is way more... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Way more locked in than, I mean, look at this. Like, yeah, it's way more locked in. Look, I can pick that whole board up like that. <clears throat> so yeah, it's way more locked in than regular Velcro is. Much sturdier, I mean, look at this, zero movement. So, come back when, uh, when I'm done. Yeah. All right, guys, everything is done for now. Um, you can see I got a little real estate there, and I will be added to something soon. I haven't quite decided what, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, but yeah, everything's wired in. Um, I still gotta do some cable management underneath, uh, get some things zip-tied up and whatnot, but, uh, that's it. Look how much cleaner that looks. Am I right? Alright, let's go back up top, and let me kind of explain some things about the board, uh, what I'm using it for, and I'll even get into the little board as well and kind of explain why I have two boards instead of one. All right, guys, so why have two pedal boards? Why go through all this hassle of ripping the main one apart and everything anyway? So first, let's talk about the mini board. Um, I put the mini board together the other day. I didn't think about it or I would have filmed the footage of that, but there wasn't really a whole lot to it. I mean, as you can see, this is kind of a pretty basic board so I got four pedals on it um so the reason I put this board together I did have everything kind of all on the big board um so I'm in two bands and both those bands do very different things um the one band that I'm in is an all original band I write all the music in the band I'm the only guitar player in the band and I need to cover 
a whole lot of different sounds for that band, right? And so that's kind of why I had the big board. Um, and I use a completely different rig in each band, like a totally different amp in each band. So that kind of drove me to wanting to have two separate boards because this board didn't really do what I wanted for the other band, which is a cover band. Um, we have two guitar players. I play guitar and sing. And we have another guy that plays lead guitar. And I don't do a whole lot of different stuff in that. I basically have like a couple, three sounds. I have like a clean tone and a rhythm tone. And then I needed like a solo tone because I do some lead guitar work in the cover band. Uh, in the original band, I do lead guitar work, but being the only guitar player, we play with backing tracks. Our drummer has a click in his ear, and we have backing tracks that go to front of house when we play. And I don't have, like, lead guitar parts, per se, like what you would think of as lead guitar parts, like shredding, you know, guitar licks or whatever. Most of my lead parts in that band are just, like, textures kind of stuff. Like, you know, two or three note kind of like ambient things over like a complicated rhythm or a breakdown or something like that, right? So in that band, I backtrack all that stuff and I just play rhythms. So I need I need to make a lot of noise in that band because it, it's kind of weird. We do a lot of weird stuff. I need to make a lot of noise, but I don't need to have like the solo boost and all that kind of stuff, right? So... <clears throat> I guess we'll start with the cover band because that's what the mini board's for. So in the cover band, I use this amp, the Marshall Mode 4, because it has a built-in solo boost on the foot switch for the amp, which is fantastic. And it also is like a four-channel amp, so it gives me all the tones I need for the cover band. And pedal-wise, I don't need a whole lot of complicated stuff. I've got uh, JHS Moonshine which is like a Tube Screamer. Um, that's pretty much just on like all the time. Uh, I got a tuner. I've got a noise gate. And then the main thing for the cover band, because we play so many songs and so many songs over different genres and time periods and stuff, right? We use a bunch of different tunings. So I've got the drop pedal so that I don't have to carry like six guitars to a show because that would be ridiculous. And so the drop pedal can put me in any tuning I want to be in. And I only have to bring a main guitar and a backup guitar. That's it. So that's the rig for the cover band. Um, and so that kind of left the main board. When I pulled some of that stuff off of the main board to build the board for the cover band rig, it kind of left the main board in a little bit of disarray. And I was like, well, I might as well just redo the whole board. So I'll kind of walk you through what's going on here on the main board. So, this is a pedal train board, which I really like. It's got a really cool case and everything, too. The key to this board is the Boss MS-3. So, the MS-3 is a multi-effects unit, but it's also a channel switcher for the amp I use in that band. And it has effects loops in it. It has three effects loops in it. And you can run three pedals into the effects loops. And you can bring those pedals into, like, the signal path however you want. Right? Which I think is super awesome. So, what's going on here? I want to be able to, because I'm doing so much other stuff, like I do backup vocals in that band too. I'm doing so much other stuff that I wanted to be able to step on one button and have it go from like a heavy rhythm tone with the plumes overdrive and a noise gate straight to like a clean tone with a reverb and delay on it. So the MS3 does that really well. Um, because you can program different patches to each of the buttons. 
And the amp I use is a Marshall JCM 2000 and it has a quarter inch TRS jack for channel switching. So I can control the channel switching with this too. So I can step on one button and it'll change channels on the amp and go to whatever I've programmed on that patch all at the same time. Um, which is really awesome. And I was trying to make that work with the Mode 4, but it just doesn't. I was having to use the Mode 4 foot switch and this at the same time and like step on two buttons at once. And that wasn't really working for me. So I thought I need to split the boards apart. I was, try I was trying to like force the one board to work for both rigs and it just wasn't. So I made a decision to split them apart and have two separate boards. Uh, and I think it's gonna work out a lot better. Um, so I do have some free space on the main board. Uh, I got one loop I'm not using. So when I'm using this board, when I go to my like heavy, dirty tone, we got the plumes. Um, the MS3 has effects built into it. And one of the things that has is a noise gate. So I'm using the noise gate in here and the plumes with the dirty channel of the JCM2000 and that's my rhythm tone. Um, when I go to my clean tone, I'm using this Klon clone, a uh, company called Pedal Monsters. And this is a Klon Centaur clone. And I just have it on in front of my clean channel all the time. Um, usually I don't run any gain with it. It's just the volume kind of giving it a little bit of a boost. And then I use the tone to kind of shape the sound a little better uh, for my, my clean sound. You know, got the MXR power supply, uh, power everything on here. Um, so the Boss Terra Echo is down here because I have it outside of the loops. And the reason it's outside the loops is because when you have something in one of the loops and program to a patch, when you change to a different patch, it kills everything that's happening on the patch you just left. So if you have any delays or reverbs or anything like that, the tails get chopped immediately because you're moving to an, another patch and whatever's not programmed on the new patch isn't gonna be doing anything, right? So I have the Terra Echo outside of the looper so that when I turn it off, the delay tails, the echo tails, like they kind of die out on their own, you know, like duh, 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 right? Which is sounds a lot more natural than just like a hard chop when you switch patches. So that's why that's outside the loop. Um, I mean, Dunlop, Crybaby, Wah, I mean, you know, Classic, wah pedal, gotta have one of those. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in the board yet. I got a pedal that I've ordered. It's another overdrive pedal. Um, I'm not sure if I need three overdrive pedals on here. I might go for a delay pedal. I've been thinking about that too. Um, the MS3 has built-in delays and reverbs, and they sound fine, but um, they sound digital, and because they are, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I just I like analog delays a little better. I think. Um, I think if I was running this through the effects loop of the amp and using it as a delay unit, I could get like these big, pristine, clean, digital delay sounds. But um, I like more like kind of through the front of the amp, like dirtier analog delay sounds, especially for like my leads and stuff. So I'll probably, I'll probably throw a delay pedal in there somewhere. Um, it's either that or the third overdrive. Because, I mean, you know, you can't have too many overdrives, right? So, that's the reason for splitting the boards apart and having two boards. Um, as far as redoing this one, you can see how clean this looks. Um, I had Velcro on it before, like you saw uh, previously. And the Velcro, to me, like I talked about, for one, it just wasn't, it's nowhere near as tight and secure as the Dulac is. Like, oh, you're hearing a cable. A loose cable slap against the back of the board that's what that is but like there's there's no movement there at all um like you could take this board and hold it totally upside down and there's just like no no fear of any of the pedals falling off whatsoever so you know we travel a lot and the pedal board's in its case sure but it's in the back of a trailer and we're driving on the road and it's getting banged around and I just wanted something a little more secure than that Velcro. And the other thing too, which this is purely cosmetic, but the Velcro gets dirty. Um, 
cat hair, dog hair, loose carpet, any kind of dust or dirt or anything like that just gets caught in that Velcro. And when you're looking at the board and you have like un, you know, used Velcro or un whatever you can see Velcro, you can just see all kinds of stuff gets caught in the Velcro. It just kind of looks bad. Um, does it really affect anything? Not really. But um, just playing the board every day, I just got tired of looking at it. I got tired of seeing all that stuff in there. And um, it's a real pain to try to clean all that out. So the dual locks is a much cleaner solution because you don't have to use nearly as much of it, right? You got to use a you got to use a lot of Velcro to get a good hold. You don't have to use that much dual lock, so you can use like a third the a third the amount of dual lock as you would Velcro, and it's like ten times stronger of a hold. Um, it's just a win win. It, it's a little more expensive, sure. Um, those two rolls of dual lock that I bought were like thirty five bucks. So, it's a little pricier than Velcro, but if you're, you know, if you're in a serious band and you're touring or gigging a lot, uh, and your pedal board's getting a lot of miles on it, and it's getting stepped on all the time, um, I really think this is the way to go with the dual lock. Um, yeah, so all I have left to do on this is, you can see I've already got some of the pieces in place. We're going to take some zip ties and uh, work on the cable management there and get that tidied up. And yeah, that'll be it for the boards. So uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, you know, all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure what the exact analytics are, but it's something like, you know, 80, 90% of the people that watch the videos aren't subscribed to the channel. So that would really help. Um, but yeah, if you are subscribed to the channel, thank you. Um, if you're watching the video, thank you. Um, and I'll be back next week.